Is Trevor Lawrence the best quarterback the Eagles have seen so far? I was thinking about that yesterday, and I feel like it's a yes. Yeah, I mean, Kirk Cousins is kind of right on that borderline of... Appreciate you streaming in here on Birds 365. Jody Mac, Johnny Mac with EJ Smith from the Inquirer. Who looks ready to go out and practice? You 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 look like you're all loose, EJ. Ready to go out and get some work in. You know the Eagles uh, have some questions along the offensive line with the Raven Smith being the uh, Raven Clark. Yeah, you, uh, yeah what I say, little, Smith. Little matchup there. Yeah. No, yeah. I I just got off the Peloton. I'm feeling good, guys. I don't know if they want me. I might uh, I might be one of those. Look well, Stoutland will get you surface and blocks. So, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, he you might he might be able to fix me up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. How's it going, yeah. guys? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, good to have you. Happy Doug Peterson Day. Uh, we're going to get to talk to the former Eagles coach, hopefully, uh, this morning, later this morning. Um, but I, I want to start with that Jacksonville team, EJ. And our producer, Tone, asked an interesting question, so I'll ask it to you. I think things have changed dramatically so quickly in Jacksonville. And we're still on the, this is week four, but is Trevor Lawrence the best quarterback the Eagles have seen so far? I was thinking about that yesterday, and I feel like it's a yes. Yeah, I mean, Kirk Cousins is kind of right on that borderline of, is he is he elite, is he not elite? I feel like with Trevor Lawrence, it's a, it's a little bit more over the top of that sort of Mendoza line of Eagle or quarterbacks against the Eagles defense. I mean, he's the type of quarterback that's only going to get better from each week, week in and week out, especially as he gets more comfortable in Doug Peterson's scheme. And I mean, he's really talented. I mean, you, I, I watched that, uh, that game against the, uh, the chargers and it's like, man, this guy can throw 40 yards on a rope. You know, it's just the way the ball fires out of his hands and just kind of his understanding of, even at this early in his career of the game, it's uh he's pretty special. And uh, you know, obviously I'm not the first one to make this comparison. I'm not going to be the last one, but they do have some uh, some 2017 Eagles DNA going on. I mean, that uh, that offensive performance against the Chargers, that's a talented defense, and they had 38 points, and they had three red zone field goals. They left a lot on the table. So, uh, yeah, I think this is definitely probably the best offense uh, that the Eagles have seen, especially just because, you know, I feel like the Vikings game, Kirk Cousins kind of just ruined everything for, yeah, by, being, by being Kirk Cousins. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I do. I agree with you. I think it's the best. I think this is the best quarterback they'll, they've faced so far. All right. I want to go back and revisit uh, Doug Peterson day. Um, <laughs> John knows I like my hypothetical questions and I'm going to run one by you, EJ. Mm -hmm. Say, oh, I don't know. E.J. Smith or John McMullen or Ed Pratt or whoever were to ask Doug Peterson, Doug, do you think you became the ex-Eagle coach more because you went four and 12 or more because you tried to flex your muscles and have say over who your coaching staff was going to be? And that kind of annoyed the owner. And that's why I gave you your walking papers. What do you think Doug's response would be? I don't know what his response would be. I know what I believe, which is the, the latter. I think that his ability or inability to build a staff that the Eagles, you know, brass was happy with was kind of the final nail in the coffin. I think, I think it was kind of like an impasse where it's like the head coach should be able to pick his staff. You know, that's what Doug's opinion is. I'm a Super Bowl winning coach. I should be able to pick my assistants and the Eagles top, you know, Howie and Jeffrey Laurie. They're probably looking at it like, well, you're not doing a good job. We, we need to step in. You were at your most successful when, when we picked your coordinators. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that given the fact that Doug had won a Super Bowl here, he had kind of proven that you know, he could take you to the highest level and develop players and, you know, run a scheme that <clears throat> would be, you know, on the cutting edge of the NFL. I do think that the biggest problem that he had here was his, you know, his staff building. And I think that was kind of what unraveled things for him. So I don't know if he'd answer it honestly, but I think that that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that he did win a Super Bowl and, you know, almost from day one, they deferred more to Nick Sirianni when it came to building a staff. Now, there were certain guys they told Nick, hey, it's probably a good idea if you want to keep Jeff Stoutland. It's probably a, a very good idea. <laughs> and they went out and got him, you know, Brian Johnson, people like that, a, a few guys. But for the most part, um, they let Nick do what he wanted to do with the coaching staff. And they never let uh, Doug do what he wanted to do with the coaching staff. Very bizarre to me. Very bizarre 
Yeah, no, it is weird. I mean, I guess maybe a little bit of it is it's not hard to sell Jonathan Gannon as a defensive coordinator no. two years ago. I mean, he was one of across now. the league, and yeah, <laughs> well, he's on the he's on the upswing. He's trending up, yeah. but yeah, I mean, uh, he was one of you know across the league. He was highly regarded. Um, you know, the offensive coordinator. I think yeah, Shane was coming from like a situation where it's like okay, like Justin Herbert's there and you know, what, what, what level of, you know, responsibility do we give Shane for, you know, his development versus just Justin Herbert being like a, a you know, superhuman uh, quarterback prospect. But I do think that Shane was a little bit of a harder sell just because, you know, you were, I think when he got here, everybody was a little bit like this guy was just running the chargers offense and the chargers offense was a big mess. They almost ruined this great quarterback, this rookie quarterback, but the quarterback kind of made everything, you know, it's like the mouthwash as they say, like he kind of made yeah. everything a little bit sweeter. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that maybe it was like the guys they were trying to sell, or maybe it was like they learned from their experience with Doug to, you know, sort of avoid, uh, avoid clashing too much with the coach trying to build his first staff. All right. Quickie quiz for you, EJ Smith. Um, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence has quarterback the Jacksonville Jaguars for the last 20 games. Who was the last guy not named Trevor Lawrence to start for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Uh, I think he's in the Eagles locker room, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Gardner Minshew. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. right. How spot, is Gardner yeah. Minshew? I have not heard his name mentioned in a month. Is he you know, still? Are we sure he's still on Eagles? You've seen you know, that John, mustache. You're sure he's still in that <laughs> locker room? I was about to say, John, I don't know if you've seen him. I haven't seen him much in the locker room either. I think he's keeping a low profile. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's a bit, and he should. Um, yeah. You know, Gardner's a very competitive guy. I think, you know, that great quote, I forget the exact quote. Maybe you remember it about not taking number twos because he doesn't believe. Yeah. He wanted to compete <laughs> with uh, Trevor Lawrence as the number yeah. one overall player. And we're like, Gardner, you know, settle down. Um, and the same thing. You remember he played well against the Jets. He went into Nick Sirianni's office. He said, look, what can I do to be the starting quarterback of this team? And Nick was like, Nothing. You're not the starting quarterback. <laughs> so it's yeah. a, he's a very good backup. I, I think mm-hmm. he's a top five backup, but I do think he's leaving after this season. He'll, he'll want a chance to compete, and the Eagles will have to go back to the quarterback factory and, and try to get <laughs> a sustainable. But you don't need it. When Jalen Hurts is playing like this, Yeah, um, it, it, it's pretty amazing. And, and so I'll, I'll shift it to Jalen. You didn't see this coming, did you, Jay? No, I, I've said it all along. Like, you know, all summer he was talking about, oh, I, I worked on my mechanics, small balls coming out smoother, you know, second year with the same play caller and the same offense. You know, the coaching staff said he was, you know, picking things up quicker. Everything was faster with him. And, like, I, I heard all that, and I was just kind of naturally skeptical of it. You know, you hear that all the time in training camp. Oh, this guy – in the best shape of his life. Oh, this guy is, has never looked better. He's, he's a, at the peak of his career. And it's like, you just need to see it. And through three games, like Jalen Hurts was not, you know, spinning yarn there. He was being honest when he said like, you know, I made significant improvements this off season. He always talks about that, putting in the work all the time. Like it shows, you know, I think uh, the Eagles have seem, seemingly always believed that he was going to reach whatever his potential was. And it was just a matter of finding out what that potential is. And I think he has redefined, the ceiling there, um, you know, just by, I know it's three games. I know it's a, a small sample size, but the throws he's making against, you know, some of these defenses are throws. I just did not see him make last year, the way that he's, you know, in command of the offense before the snap, even, you know, making checks at the line. These are all things that like we just didn't see as much last year. And I think, you know, <clears throat> he's a hard quarterback to figure because it's like, what is, what, what is his ideal ceiling? Like, you know, what is, there's not like an archetypal quarterback that you can point to, you know, like yeah. you think about Cam Newton, but Cam was huge. You know, Cam's like six four two forty. You think of Russell Wilson. I don't know if Jalen's necessarily that dynamic on the run as a passer as Russell Wilson. And I don't think he makes, you know, maybe some of the, the same type of throws that Russell Wilson does. I mean, there's, there's like, just, it's hard to really figure out like what is Jalen's, you know, what quarterback can you point to and say that's him at his best? You know, it's, it's not Lamar. He's a different type of player. Um, you know, maybe statistically, production-wise, production he could be that, around that, but not the same play style. So, yeah, no, I mean, I did not see it coming. <clears throat> you know, some of the throws that he's made uh, toward the intermediate middle of the field, deep middle of the field, not just to A.J. Brown, but to Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith, those are throws he just didn't make last year. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't you can't overstate it. It's it's a huge, uh, it's a huge development piece for him. And, you know, we'll see, there's going to be more tests as the season goes on, you know, 
Uh, we'll see how he kind of fares through some of the you know better defenses in the league. I still think there's a lot to improve on, uh, even though they've been really productive. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you said it. Like, if I'm Gardner Minshew, like, I no longer view the Eagles as a place where, oh, I might be able to compete for a quarterback job at some point. Like, no, Jalen is kind of establishing himself as a long-term answer for sure. And, oh, by the way, you can use whatever metric you want to rate quarterbacks, rating, and uh, different. If you look at pro football focus, they got him rated the number two quarterback in the league right now. Yeah. I'm a fan. I I, I <laughs> stumped for him all off season. I wasn't crazy enough to go, I think he could be the second best quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> no chance, no shot. And I consider myself a pretty damn big Jalen Hurts fan. So he has gone above and beyond what expectations could have reasonably uh, been. I right, Dougie sure. P's coming to town this week. You guys are going to talk to him today. What's the crowd reaction when Peterson first takes the field? How long will it last? <laughs> and do you think they go video tribute? I, I think I'd go video tribute, right? I mean, you want a Super Bowl here? I don't you pay don't attention so? to that stuff. You know, they were asking me. I, I guess I don't pay attention to that stuff because See, I couldn't I remember think, Andy. I think they did with Andy. Yeah, I, I think, can't. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember right. the history of it. So I'm just yeah. giving. I'm just going off a of feel here more than anything. Like it feels like they should. Like I don't know. I don't think the breakup was that messy that you you can't you know, appreciate what he did here. I think that there's a chance he'll get booed. I mean, everybody gets booed in Philadelphia. <laughs> like, it's kind of the thing. I think he'll probably get booed early on, and then he'll probably get some some type of ovation or some thank you, Doug, chant or something like that. Um, I could see it being a mix of boos and cheers, too. I'm sure that, like, WIP and the Fanatic are probably talking about this all week. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, should you boo the should you I, boo I, Doug? I, <laughs> I, you know, I don't think there's any chance Doug gets booed pregame. Now, you in don't game, so. they're going to okay. boo him. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I I think you know because then it becomes Eagles versus Jags and he's the yeah. enemy. But I don't think Eagles fans dislike Doug Peterson at all. No, they definitely don't. All. I think that a lot of them were sad to see him go, and they yeah. were sad to see him end up somewhere else this uh, this off season. Yeah. So yeah, you might you be know, right. Maybe what, maybe it'll be like an ovation at the start, and then yeah, at some point, like if they show him on the jumbotron mid game, he's gonna get yeah, booed. Especially <laughs> if he can bird support down. With the yeah, help of seriously. Ryan Paganetti, <laughs> uh, our buddy Ryan, uh, yeah. Jaguars director of analytics or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, I I do want you know to me, I I think I look at one potential sort of X factor in this game, and tell me if I'm crazy with this, EJ. But I see Mike McCoy over on Doug's staff. I see Jim Bob Cooter over on Doug's staff. Like nobody knows Nick Sirianni better than those guys. Yeah. Does Nick Sirianni have to have to shift his tendencies this week uh, against Jacksonville? Yeah, it might be some some of the calls can't be the same, you know, like at the line of scrimmage. And yeah, the tendency thing is the thing. I mean, that's that's a thing. You know, I, it, Nick always talks about getting the edge on guys in any way you possibly can. You know, watching uh, opposing coaches press conferences and you know watching hard knocks again when the lines were on it, like. He wants that information, and I now it's like right at Doug's fingertips, you know, guys who understand the intricate workings of the Eagles offense, you know, and especially, I mean, we can all – we all kind of understand, like, the Eagles offense isn't super complex. It's not, you know, this no. huge playbook. It's kind of like simple concepts run well with talented players. You know, that's kind of the basis of it. So, I don't know. It, it kind of goes both ways. I could see it going either way. Like, I could see it being like, yeah, like, the Jags were completely prepared for everything the Eagles offense was going to do. But like most teams probably are pretty familiar with what the Eagles offense is. Yeah, that's point. fair. That's and it's fair. like the difference is that like, okay, well, you've got, we've got AJ Brown and Devonte Smith and you've got whoever you have on the other side, like good luck, you know? Yeah. So I think it's, I think it'll probably come down to the players just because it's not like the Eagles have like the secret, you know, exotic look that they only use in certain t t packages. I feel like, even us watching the games, we kind of yeah. Like, well, not little, not according like, to know, Nick. Everything's yeah. everything's secret, but yeah, it's very simple. Yeah. I say that all the time, EJ, and I get killed for it. I, it well, is no, a very not, simple. It's offense. not a. It's not a knock. It's not like yeah. you don't like Jalen Hurts is still what twenty four years old. He's you know been a full time starter. This is what his third year. This is his third year. Why am I blanking on that? Yeah, third third year. Yeah, so year it's like starter. yeah, second year starter, third year. Sorry, I don't know. It's early for me, I guess. Um, <laughs> but like, but no, I mean, it's not a knock to have a simple offense when you when you're able to put twenty four points up in a quarter and you know outscore teams and basically put games away in a half. It's like you know. 
it's what Jalen's good at. It's what he knows so far. And it's not uh, that much of a concern or like a huge red flag that like he hasn't progressed yet. I mean, it seems like he's going to keep progressing. So uh, yeah, no, I don't think it's a knock that the offense is simple. It's working. You know, it's like make number one offense in the NFL. Exactly. Just get out of your players way. Let them make plays. And Oh, by the way, Nick Sirianni did a good job uh, day before yesterday, defending himself from the doubters like John McMullen, who point out that they're last in the league in motion. Can't do motion when you go and hurry up. If you're playing with pace, you just want to get to the line of scrimmage and get the defense before they can get set. So good on on Nick for defending himself. Now he's got to keep playing (laughs) with pace, though, which I'm not sure he really wants to do, but I think it works for him. I hope it's working for him right now. Yeah. Yeah. No motion for motion's sake, John. That's uh, that's uh, that's the no US no motion for model. motion's sake. Yeah, <laughs> which is you know it, there's obviously Sean McVay is sort of the guy still in the NFL and he's Mister Motion. So it is yeah. an interesting disconnect from that standpoint. It's All like right, so. But, let me ask. Let me ask both you guys. Sorry to interrupt, John. How does Doug's offense compare to the rest of the National Football League when it comes to motion? Here in Philadelphia, Jacksonville now, are uh, the Eagles they use be more on the than, for than the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, well, that's most teams. Yeah. Yeah. They use <laughs> no, more they, than the Eagles. They use it. I think that Doug yeah. is smart. I think Doug is the type of coach that like he uses it because it's like you can get just a tiny advantage sometimes from doing it. It's like even if it's just like I think <clears throat> against the Chargers, I noticed a couple of times that they'd have like the back rotate to the other side right before the snap. And they just do that just to mess with you, you know, it's just to, you know, get you a little bit off guard right before the snap, you know, just that little tiny advantage you can get from a defensive lineman having to go, wait a second, like, okay, now the back's going to go this way in a read option play. It's like, you know, just tiny, like, you know, winning on the margins, I guess. And that's kind of what I think of when I think of like Doug as a coach and as an offensive, like, you know, mind is kind of just like those like little tiny advantages you can get kind of like adding those up. So they definitely use more than the Eagles, but I I do think they have like, they kind of explained why the motion for motion sake doesn't really make sense is because you can just just throw it in just to, just to, you know, well, I love, I love, um, I love McVay's description, uh, illusion of complexity. It looks complex, but it isn't complex for them. Um, and the goal is to get the defenders, you know, uh, moving their eyes and, and just being undisciplined. That's the goal, um, of, of motion for the most part. I think a lot of people think it's for the quarterback to see what coverage you're in, but so many people use, uh, the Eagles version of defense, which basically starts out as cover two. And then you go into your coverage, whether it's yeah. quarters, usually quarters, but could be cover six cover eight could be a bunch of different things and you try to hold it so the quarterback has to make that post snap decision which Jalen Hurts by the way has been very good at this year yeah and and that's well, a, that's a big improvement yeah and like the Eagles instead will just like <clears throat> use that empty formation with a running back out wide and that's yeah empty another way for him. yeah yeah and that's just well. another way to go okay if your number one corner is on the running back all the way out of the sideline you're not in man coverage. Like you're not wasting your number one corner on Kenny game. Well, so, um, <clears throat> and defenses are getting better and better at hiding that anyway. The defenses are, are not just going to keep giving you the answers. And that's, you know, exactly what you're saying with Jonathan Gannon. Like he's not giving you pre-snap answers. He wants to make you work post-snap while, you know, people are trying to rip your head off. So, uh, uh yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not that simple anymore. I get, I get where the Eagles coaches are coming from, but I do think that like <clears throat> you've seen good coaches work it in for a reason. So. All right, EJ, coming off a week where the Eagles got nine sacks, <laughs> I'm setting this week's under-over total on sacks at two and a half. That's coming <laughs> down pretty uh, precipitously, but there were a whole bunch of reasons why they got nine last week. Well, I know they, the biggest one. You, you taking the under <laughs> or the over on two and a half Eagle sacks against Jacksonville on Sunday, and why? Yeah, I'm kind of with John. They're not they're not playing Carson Wentz this week. Yeah. <laughs> and Trevor Lawrence, I looked at his like time to throw yesterday. <clears throat> it was really fast against the Chargers, like I think fastest uh, of the season. And it was probably I think it was like two point three something. It was pretty quick. Um, if he's going to get the ball that quick, they're just not going to get to him. So I don't know. It really depends on what Gannon does schematically. You know, like against Washington, it was really a point of emphasis. Let's take away the first read, make Carson kind of work through his progression. And sort of get Carson in that mode where it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make a play in here. I gotta, 
you know, I got to push it down the field. I'm not taking the check down. I think Trevor Lawrence is, you know, aggressive at times, but he's willing to get the ball out. So two and a half, I probably take the under, honestly. I think this is going to be another game where it's kind of like the Kirk Cousins game where it's like they didn't have a lot of sacks. They had a lot of pressure. Um, You know, I think that the Eagles' best case scenario, obviously their best case is that they have the over, but, you know, Mm -hmm. I think the most likely is somewhere in between the Eagles affect the quarterback but don't get – don't get much sack production because they're basically just getting those very high value pressures that Gannon talks about, you know, where pressure is almost as good as a sack in some cases. Um, and I guess the worst case is they really just don't affect the quarterback because they're playing off coverage and Trevor Lawrence is just taking what's there. So, yeah, I think that they could definitely come down to earth. I think they'll have their games where they have a lot of sacks. I do think it's a good front. You know, I think that they, they can generate pressure against good teams, but uh, I am just a little bit, uh, I have my doubts about them always having high sack games because of the way that the defense is structured. Yeah. In a weird way, and I've thrown this out a couple of times to people, and I want to get your thought on this, EJ. Does a nine sack game hurt the Eagles from this perspective? They have a very good defensive line. I mean, that's how they built this team. They think that's the strength of the defense. They won a bunch of one-on-ones against Washington um you can't do that every week i'm getting in trouble it's not sustainable i'll say that again jody <laughs> good for uh, you. you can't do that every right. week um and if it's expected that you're just going to win like that all of a sudden you're in the third quarter fourth quarter of a game you're not getting pressure um and the defensive coordinator is expecting those guys to get pressures can that kind of hurt in a weird way when you have a game like that Long yeah so time? i I guess are you saying like maybe Gannon's like I don't need the blitz I can get pressure yeah, with these front exactly. four front five. There's a chance. Um, there's definitely a chance. Uh, I think the Gannon will always be kind of creative in the way that he sends four or five. Like you know you're seeing. I know people. I don't want to get. I don't want to open up the the Pandora's box of Hassan Reddick dropping into coverage. But oh, you know yeah. you you see those those rushes where like you've got T.J. Edwards coming up the a gap and Hassan dropping into coverage and. Listen, I have no quarrel with that. Like, that is no, modern. you got to throw a curveball. I tell <laughs> yeah. Elliot all the time. He's like, I, you can't have a son Reddick drop it. You can't throw a fastball, even if you're a power pitcher, every single every time. Yeah. Right. you got to yeah. throw a curveball. Now, like, what context we drop us on in, it's like, that's well, where I'm that, starting to, yeah, yeah, that's where I start to understand where people are coming from. It's like, is he chasing around tight ends in the flat, or is he dropping as a whole player and sort of just being a body in space, you know? Um, so that's, I get, I get the argument, but no, I, I think Gannon mixes up his, his rushes enough where even if, if the, if the front's not getting pressure in the first or second quarter, I could see them saying, all right, let's work in, you know, a couple of blitzes or maybe just some sim pressures where we send, you know, TJ Edwards to blow up a running back and pass pro or, you know, Kaiser white, or, you know, even Avante Maddox, sometimes they'll send him. So it's like, I do think that the blitzing, the frequency of blitzing makes me less, uh, concerned about it. I would say like, you know, last year, I'm totally with you. I think that Gannon was just like, okay, I'm going to try and get pressure with my front four, my front five, and that's just what it is. If they don't get home, then we're not going to have a great day. But this year, I think he's been more middle of the road with blitzes. He's had a lot more zero for sure. So um, I could see them still working in some blitzes, trying to cook, uh, cook Trevor Lawrence up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a young quarterback. You might try to rattle him early in the game. All right. I preface this question with the fact that I know the Eagles are the number one offense in the National Football League. Uh, and if it's going to tick off Eagle fans, I'll apologize in advance. Tell me the Zach Pascal jet sweep is not on this week's <laughs> play card for the <clears throat> offense. Yeah, that one was a head scratcher. I mean, I know that that Nick loves Pascal and that they really appreciate this the contributions he makes doing all the dirty work, but uh, I I don't know. It's one of those like coaches getting in the way of themselves almost yeah, <clears throat> where yeah. it's like, let's get past a touch yeah. on a jet sweep. Like he's going to score and we're going to sit there and talk about how awesome he is and how, you know, he's our lunch pail wide receiver for <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's kind of, that kind of felt like that. Now the shovel pass, I know people were mad about that one too. I thought that was actually a pretty well drawn up play. It just, yeah, just kind of like short on it, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of just weird, weird timing wise. Um, but yeah, the Pascal jet sweep I think has got you got to crumble that one up, throw it in the trash. Get get the guy. Uh, I mean, he gets he gets touches every game. He runs that like they run that like 
I call it all triple option, even though it's not really triple option, where he runs that flat route and Jalen kind of just tosses it out to him. Yeah. That's like one of their bread and butter plays, and that's the Pascal. So I don't think you got to worry about getting that guy touches. Uh, and he doesn't seem like the type of guy who's going to be upset if he doesn't get a lot of touches either. So, no. uh, yeah, I think that was just uh, maybe a little bit of, like I said, coaching hubris maybe. <laughs> Agree. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of haughtiness. You know, if they are going to run that play, because there is one thing. If I look at this Eagles offense and – if I'm a defensive coordinator, I don't know what the heck I'm trying to do. Like, who am I trying to stop? But if there's one yeah. nitpick, I, I would say it's they don't have a manufactured touch player. What they tried yeah. to make Jalen Rager <clears throat> in, I haven't been able to do that. You can't go to Zach Pascal though. Why not Kenny Gainwell <laughs> running that play? Well, I feel like Kenny Gainwell is their manufactured touch player at this point. Like, they really do. Like, they like to force him the ball sometimes, and it's like, you have all these, you know, superstars on the outside. You got Devontae right. Smith, you got AJ Brown, you got Dallas Goddard, even Quez Watkins. I mean, he could be a decent manufactured touch player, but they I love, don't know. I don't they know. They love that Quez Kenny Gainwell it. on a Texas route or on a screen. They like yeah. they like to get him the ball a couple of times. And I'll here's, be honest, I just haven't seen it. You know, here's Quez's job, EJ. <laughs> just run by people. Because yeah, I see him on kick returns. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he's he doesn't not, have a lot of yeah. teams, you're right. Yeah. 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 He's I not going to break a tackle. He's kind of perfect for that role of like number three receiver. The safety's got to stay deep because you're that you're out there, but you're only going to get the ball a couple times a game, and you know he's going to be happy because every other game he's going to catch a fifty yard bomb. But yeah. you know he's a lot of times just kind of going to be you know making the safety respect him. That's about it. So, EJ, which is going to be the more interesting matchup this week? And you can define interesting any way you want. <laughs> Eagles offense against the Jags defense or the Jags offense against the Eagles de defense. Which do you think is more interesting? Uh, give me the Eagles defense <clears throat> against the Jags offense. I I feel like the Eagles offense is probably due for a little bit of regression here. And this is a good Jaguars defense. So I think it could, it could definitely happen. Um, but even if the Eagles offense struggles, I'm not going to throw out the first three games and go, oh, this is time to sound the alarms or, you know, this is a big concern. I, I still think that this offense has kind of proven that they can play up to the talent level. You know, they can, you know, generate a lot of explosives and kind of do that stuff. I'm still curious to see what the Eagles defense will settle into against really good offenses and really good quarterbacks. Um, you know, we talked about Kirk Cousins earlier and how he's kind of like right on that line of, Will this quarterback shred the Eagles defense? Uh, I thought Wentz was below it. Um, obviously, I thought Jared Goff was below it. So I think this is, this is another interesting test. You know, it's like when you're look when you're looking at a three and O team that people are picking for the Super Bowl and people are picking for deep playoff runs and are they the best team in the NFC? It's really just like we've seen them play three games and they've passed every test so far. And it's like there will be more tests. And I think. As far as like which side has the bigger test, I say I'd say it's the Eagles defense against a good Jags offense with some talent uh, and like you, like we mentioned, like the best quarterback they've faced and a really good play caller. So yeah, I'm a, I'm curious to see how the Eagles defense fares. I think you know if they struggle, it's not you know the end all be all. You can't throw out the first three games for them either. But I do think that it's an interesting test to kind of gauge like what are the Eagles going to be down the stretch. You know what are are, are the Eagles actually a Super Bowl? contender uh i think we're we'll get more answers to that uh you know after sunday at ej smith 94 tells you a couple things where to follow ej on twitter and he's a lot younger than me <laughs> in inquire.com read him there covers uh, does a great job with jeff is, is, Plain, is that is that date of birth rather than an allegiance to uh wip 94 is that what that's not no that, i didn't even think about that people probably yeah. think that that's what that is no it's uh it's my year of birth. You yeah. Know? Okay. Uh, Just yeah. double check. I, I know it. Know it. I didn't know it. I, I, my, my bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's all uh, good. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, another week, another player of the week for the Eagles. Uh, every week, Brandon Graham, defensive player of the week. Man, people get too upset about these things. But why isn't Devontae offensive player of the week? I, I would have went Devontae more than Brandon this week. Uh, yeah, I think that it was one of those, like, you know, uh, like the Super Bowl MVP to the Giants yeah. defensive line. I think it was one of those. It's like, yeah. you guys had nine nine sacks. Like, we got to give this to somebody on that Eagles defensive line. Why don't we give it to 
you know, Brandon Graham, we know him. He's coming off a tough injury. Let's just toss that one to him. So I'm with you. When I, I saw, like, Devontae, I, you know, it, as I'm, like, in a malaise, like, a, you know, early in the morning, I'm reading <laughs> Twitter, and it's like I see Devontae Smith, NFC Offensive Player of the Week. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And then I saw it was actually somebody tweeting, like, Devontae Smith should have been NFC Player yeah. of the Week. I was like, oh, like, that is a little bit of a surprise. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I think that the Brandon Graham one was probably more of a, like, a, like a lifetime achievement or not lifetime achievement, but like, Hey, let's, let's give this to the entire group, but we can't give it to the entire group. Let's give it to Brandon Graham. So. EJ, great stuff. We appreciate it. Whenever you come on, thanks for getting up early and hopping on with us today. And the only reason I made the WIP a comment was because you had mentioned them earlier. It yeah. No. WIP guy trying to overly <laughs> tell WIP. No, no, no. You, you brought it up, but no. Yeah, I just, no, I'm not a company I man with WIP. I'm a, I'm I, inquiry uh, through and through. <laughs> but thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, AJ. Good for you, brother. Always.